Batman has had many celebrated event stories over the years. War Games tends to be one that gets glossed over in the general discussion of things. It's definitely a story that Batman fans don't have a general consensus on, and personally, I'm pretty split on it myself. It was a crossover that went throughout the Bat Family books, and was published from October 2004 to January of the next year. For context, the arc immediately before this was As the Crow Flies by Judd Winnick, which, despite my love for Judd Winnick, is a story that I'm not too fond of. The last Bat Family crossover that was on this scale was Bruce Wayne Fugitive two years prior to that. Starting off with the art, a lot of it in this storyline is very in line with many of DC's books from this era up to around 2008. This era of Batman specifically was very focused on being grounded and gritty. The coloring in the story is very consistent, lots of browns, yellows. Um, think something like Batman Begins, the color palette of that, but put it in a comic book, and that's pretty in line with the story of War Games, or at least most of it, there are a few exceptions. Though the art style can be very jarring at times, one of the more standout examples is how Black Mask looks. Throughout the story, his mask changes very drastically depending on who the artist is. Sometimes it's very realistic, other times he looks pretty cartoony. Another character that's pretty similar to that is Cassandra Kane. She isn't as big of an example as Black Mask is, but there are some artists who are much more detailed with how her face looks in the mask compared to others. Some of the more recognizable artists include Brad Walker. He's been connected to the Green Lantern series, working on Green Lanterns, the Rebirth title. He's also worked on the Sinestro solo series, and he worked on Green Lantern New Guardians. He was on Aquaman for the first three Rebirth volumes, Action Comics, back when Grant Morrison was working on that. And he's also worked on some Marvel stuff, like some of the Dan Abnett Guardians of the Galaxy. Another recognizable name working on this is Paul Gulasi. Paul's been working on comics for a long time, dating back to the early Bronze Age. His best known stuff is probably his work on Master of Kung Fu in the 70s. We also have some big name writers working on this crossover as well. Starting things off, we have Ed Brubaker, who I'm sure doesn't need an introduction to many of you. At the time of this crossover, he was working on the Catwoman book. Brubaker is known for many great runs on multiple characters, some including the immortal Iron Fist with Matt Fraction. He's also worked on plenty of Batman. He has probably my favorite run on Captain America. And he had his great run in the 2000s on Daredevil. One of the other big names working on this is Bill Willingham of Fables fame. He was helming the Robin book at the time. The gist of War Games is Stephanie Brown is back as spoiler and inadvertently triggers a massive gang war across Gotham that eats the city alive. With Nightfall sort of being the granddaddy of these Bat Family crossovers, War Games follows in its formula pretty closely as well. Similar to Nightfall, this story really leans on having a wide variety of villains running around the city causing mayhem. The story is best known for really elevating Black Mask to where he would be in Under the Red Hood and a few other stories from the mid to late 2000s, at least the Roman Sionis incarnation. Aside from him, some other big name villains in this story include the Penguin, Deadshot, Ventriloquist, Firefly, and sort of Hush. Mr. Freeze and the Scarecrow, who is now going by the Scare Beast due to the previous arc, appear in this story as well. But they're both very throwaway appearances. Mr. Freeze is only in one issue, and the Scare Beast is in a couple of panels in one issue, but it's a very blink and you'll miss it appearance. The main gimmick this story has going for it is it really highlights a lot of the lesser known villains that Batman has had over the years. Some of these include Hellhound, who is technically a Catwoman villain, Silver Monkey, Carnivora, and both Vicious and Pistolera. We also have some deep pulls as far as gangs go for this storyline. They bring back the Odessa mob, Blinks and the Ghost Dragons are brought back, and as well as some new creations like Latino Unified. Similar to events like this for the Bat Family, War Games has plenty of little side plots focusing on either certain villains or members of the Bat Family and their allies as the war is going on. 
Unfortunately, this works kind of as a double-edged sword since it sometimes messes with the pacing. The biggest example of this for me are the Tim Drake interludes we have with him living a normal life since this is the period where Tim was technically retired as Robin. It's not written poorly, but a majority of it feels like a huge gear shift compared to the rest of the events, and it feels kind of like the story's just spinning its wheels until we get to the next big action scene. At points, Nightwing's story also feels pretty similar, or at least it feels like things are just repeating itself. His relationship with the new tarantula that's in town seemed to just go over a lot of the same points, and it's just a really annoying cycle of, oh, can I trust you, or oh, how is your like moral ethic compared to mine, and stuff like that. The storyline going on with Hush and the second incarnation of Prometheus. Going back to my Nightfall comparison, they sort of take the role of Joker and Scarecrow palling around throughout the city. But unlike Scarecrow and Joker, they aren't really entertaining and they don't really have much of an impact on the story. It's mostly just Hush going around talking about how he's going to do something. And then halfway through the book, Hush basically disappears and we don't really hear from him for the rest of the crossover. Also, as a side note, I really don't like this Hush design. Going back to the big crossover checklist, this story, like many other Batman stories, has the trope of television commentary and exposition being inserted throughout the storyline. In something like Nightfall, you have the talk show, which Riddler eventually hijacks, or in something like Dark Knight Returns, you have the newscasters giving updates on the condition in the city. Arturo Rodriguez is the reporter that fills this role for War Games, but unlike the talking head in something like Dark Knight Returns, Arturo doesn't really contribute much to the story. He's kind of there just to give very surface level, oh, Batman is a bad guy, I don't trust him type of lines. He starts off as someone interested in Batman and the Bat family as a whole, to thinking he's a menace and needs to be locked up a la J. Jonah Jameson. And the turn happens very suddenly. It's not a gradual, like, oh, I'm uh, figuring out more type of things about Batman and forming an opinion. And speaking of things changing like that, Batman is very inconsistently handled throughout this storyline. And it's mostly just a Batman problem. Nightwing seems pretty normal. Cassandra Cain is very on brand for how she acts. Oracle is fine, but I, I don't know what it is, but there's just something about Batman that seems very off for some reason throughout the storyline. The ending of the book felt very rushed as well. I read this in three trade paperbacks, so going off that for reference. The first volume, you have the start of the gang conflict. Villains are joining forces you get different gangs going on batman bat family they start taking on or at least what's present of the bat family starts facing off against these gangs volume two the warfare continues Bat family gets stronger everyone joins together you get more of a cohesive feel and then in the third one it starts off business as usual everything's still going along and then halfway through the third book it just feels like someone realized oh no we only have x amount of time to finish the story better hop to it i get that black mask is a villain that can't have a big drawn out like hand-to-hand -hand altercation with batman but the final fight between the two is only seven pages and then the rest of the book is essentially just the aftermath of it overall even after saying all this aloud and writing this script and all that i still don't really know if i like war games or not i like the art i like some of the character interactions the story is a relatively okay concept as far as lower tier batman villains getting some time in the spotlight having a big conflict get to see some of your favorite Bat family members from that point in time interact with each other in the first big crossover of that scale in a fair amount of time as far as comic book crossovers go. But unfortunately the story just kind of gets bogged down by very truncated writing, weird pacing issues at some points, and just 
chunks of filler that you could probably cut out and have a more enjoyable reading experience. If you want to own War Games physically, you can get it in the three trade paperback version from the 2000s, the version I own personally. They also have a newer printing from the 2010s. It's two volumes in that case. It collects both the epilogue and the prelude to the story. The paper quality is overall better as well. It's uh, not the rough comic book type paper. It's a nice, more glossy type paper. With that being said, thank you for watching or listening to this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video.